Hey everybody, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC and today we're going to talk about editing shortcuts when using keyboard focus. So with the session open, the first thing we want to do is turn the keyboard focus function on and off for editing. So it's a little a dot dot c up here in the corner of the edit window. When it's lit up is when it's on. Uh, there are other focuses such as, you know, for your clip bin focus or a group focus, but we're going to focus on editing. So there are quite a few shortcuts here. Uh, I'm going to focus on the ones that I use the most. Um, a lot of the shortcuts can vary on uh, what workflow you're in, um, such as if uh, your timeline and edit selections are connected, different things like that. So again, I'm just going to focus on, uh, for me, are the most used. So if you are not aware, um, there is a full-on shortcuts guide available here. You can open up and you can scroll down and they actually have a keyboard focus shortcut section that will have some of this in it. There is one big error in here though with the D key and what it says it'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the two that I use the most which is the R and the T key, which is R to zoom out and T to zoom in. So they are right next to each other on the keyboard. So another set of shortcuts that is directly related to those is the ability to assign zoom settings to these five keys right here, these five numbers, which are recallable on your keyboard um, is one through five on your keyboard, not the numpad section, but over top of the QWERTY. So on the keyboard, we're at one, two, three, four, and five. Now you can see five doesn't follow the zoom pattern of zooming in closer um, as you go up. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the zoom setting that you want it to save at, hold down control on the keyboard, and then click on the button you want it saved at. You can also right click the number and choose it to save that way as well. So let's zoom out to another setting somewhere and then click on five and we're zoomed in to where we saved it at. And this does work regardless of the track size. So let's zoom back out with larger tracks, hit our five key and we are zoomed back in. Another nice feature is that many of our basic keyboard functions hold true here uh, you, where you just don't have to hold down the modifier key to get the shortcut to work. So such as copy and paste. So select the region you want. Instead of hitting control C, you can just hit C and it's copied. Now scroll to where we want to paste it to and instead of hitting control V you would just hit V. And then so to undo because you didn't like where it copied to you can just hit Z for undo instead of control Z. So C to copy V to paste and if you don't like it, you can just hit Z to undo instead of Control Z. And for a redo, um, which is normally Control Shift Z in Pro Tools, we can just hold Shift Z to redo. Zoom toggle is another feature I use a lot while editing, which lets you zoom in on the selected track, which is the E key. Uh, so make a selection or just have your cursor where you want it centered and then hit E and it'll zoom in and zoom out for you. Another set of shortcuts I use all the time when editing is when um, moving up and down 
between tracks, um, but I want to keep my timeline placement exact, or I want to move uh, selections of audio between tracks. Uh, you can quickly do that with your semicolon key to move down and your P key to move up. So for this example, let's make a selection of audio here. And we want to duplicate it, so let's hit C to copy it and hit our semicolon to move down to where we want it and V to paste it. And if we don't want it there, hit Z to undo and then P to move back up. So another one I use all the time is um, a way to trim the beginning and end points of a selection. And you do that with a B key. And I would typically do that if, say, I just wanted to mute a region. So I would make our selection, hit the B key to cut it, and then you can right-click it and go to Mute, or just hit Control-M for the shortcut to Mute. Another one to look at is um, set up through uh, your preferences. And these are your default fade settings. So you can come in here to uh, your default fade-in settings, uh, fade-out settings, and your default crossfade settings. So where we would use this is say, let's copy a selection here. So C, move it to where we want it, drop our cursor and hit V. And then if you wanna put a crossfade in to get rid of any clicks, pops, anything like that, you can zoom in. In this situation, we are in grid mode right now. So if you wanna break out of the grid to create the fade, hold down control and shift, and then you can set your fade size, and then hit F to automatically create the fade. Um, and that will create the fade without the normal fade dialog. Or you could do the same thing, select the region and hit control F, and that would pull up the fades dialog. So we're bypassing that by just hitting F. Then you can also do a quick fade in by selecting the length of the fade that you want at the start of the clip and hitting the F key. Now there is a quicker way to do this now is to just have your cursor down where you want it and just hit the D key and it will do an auto fade in from wherever your cursor is to the start of the clip. The opposite of that is if you go to the end of the clip put your cursor down where you want it and hit G, that'll do a fade from the cursor to the end of the clip. And then a similar related feature is a trim to and trim from function. So in this case, you could just have your cursor down and hit the S key, and that will do a trim from your cursor to the end of the clip. And this will work anywhere within the clip boundaries. And then if you want to do a trim to your cursor, uh, go to where you want to start the trim at and hit A, and that'll trim from the beginning of the clip to your cursor. Now we can do this over multiple tracks as well if you want to, so select all the tracks you want and then hit the A key and it'll do the trim to. Now in this case, you see the one clip in the midst of all of that was left here because it was not part of the actual original clip boundaries that the trim function was uh, being triggered from. Another cool feature is the ability to nudge tracks forward and later in the timeline by a set amount by using the period and comma keys. So let's say we want to nudge this track forward later in the timeline, being more specific. Um, here is your nudge settings in which you can select bars and beats, samples, uh, whichever time format you want to use, and use the period key to nudge it later in the timeline. Or you can use the comma key to nudge it earlier in the timeline. 
Now you can get into a little more detail, say switch it to samples, um, designate the amount of samples at a time. You want it to nudge each time you hit the period or comma key. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And now we are nudging it 10 samples at a time. And here is the grid set to 10 samples so you can see it moving exactly at that amount. Another one I use all the time is toggling on the tracks between the waveform and the volume view. So wherever you have your cursor landed, uh, just hit the minus key there between your zero and equals key on the keyboard and it will toggle between waveform and volume view. Now, if you want to do multiple tracks at once, just throw your cursor down on all those tracks and hit the minus key and you can toggle back and forth. Like I stated earlier, these are representative of my workflow and the ones that I use the most. Um, so feel free to open up the shortcuts guide, experiment, um, see if anything maybe helps you and what you're looking for. Thanks for watching the video and feel free to contact us with any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.